Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll study about translatory motion in linear and concurrent force systems. Before studying about this, first we'll define what is the process of composition of forces. The process of composition of forces helps in determining whether the net unbalanced force or forces acting on a segment okay by knowing this will determine whether the segment is at rest or in motion okay furthermore if you know the direction or orientation and the location of the net unbalanced forces we can determine the type and the direction of the motion of that segment okay this is about the composition of the forces guys how the composition of forces helps in all this now let us see what is linear force system first we'll see the definition a linear force system exists when two or more forces acts in same plane same segment and in same line okay a linear force system exists when two or more forces act acts in a same plane same segment and in same line then only the linear force system exists okay now the forces in a linear force system will be assigned a positive sign or a negative sign as you have seen in a uh, direction of the displacement video we have assigned with respect to that of the axis for example if you take this one this is y axis positive y axis and this is a negative y axis and this is a positive x axis and negative x axis and this is a positive z axis and a negative z axis okay when the displacement takes place sorry guys this is this is positive and this is negative when the displacement with respect to x axis takes place that is in the right direction towards the right it is designated as a positive sign and when the displacement of the force takes place in the upward direction that is with respect to y axis that is designated as positive and when the displacement of the force takes place in the forward direction that is with respect to z axis is designated as positive so the force displacement towards the right up and z axis forward is, are designated as positive signs whereas the negative signs are assigned when the displacement of the force with respect to y axis is towards the left and with respect to uh, X, this is x-axis with respect to x-axis if the displacement is towards the left it is designated as a uh, uh, negative sign with respect to y-axis when the displacement is towards the downward it is negative uh, again it is assigned negative when the displacement is towards the backward with respect to z-axis is designated as negative now simply right up and forward in these directions right with respect to x up with respect to y and forward with respect to z axis are assigned positive sign whereas the left down and backward with respect to all these are assigned a negative sign okay this in turn is applicable in a linear force system too how see 
if you take the gravity on leg foot segment this vector and the weight boot on leg foot segment this is another vector weight boot on leg foot segment these two vectors act in the same direction that is a linear force system exists when two or more forces act in the same plane that is in the same plane the same segment this is the leg foot segment and in the same line okay then only the linear force system exists now in the linear force system how the negative and positive signs are assigned if you take this same diagram here this is negative y positive y axis and this is positive x and the negative x and this is positive z axis and negative z axis now if you take this these vectors are with respect to the y axis okay they are vertical now if you as i said if the force displacement acts in the downward direction it is designated as negative sign so these two vectors are in a assigned as negative signs okay we will come back to that again later the net effect or the resultant forces in a linear force system are equal to sum of the magnitudes of all the forces in the linear force system for example the gravity gravity on leg foot segment has a net force of uh, a force of 48 newtons and the weight boot leg foot segment exerts a 40 newtons for example okay now these two are in the downward direction as i said they are they assigned a uh, to them uh, it is assigned as a negative sign so we can take it as negative negative so sum of the magnitude of all the forces okay to get the net effect or the resultant force the net effect of these two forces is about minus 88 newtons why minus 88 newtons minus 48 plus minus 40 will get minus 88 newtons that is a net effect or the resultant forces in this linear force system okay and all the forces in a linear force system can be composed into a single resultant vector how before before coming in on to this point i'll explain about the uh, action line okay the resultant vector of the linear force system will uh, the action line will be in the same line as that of the original vectors okay for example if you extend this line the dotted part this becomes an action line okay so the action line of the resultant vector will be in the same line as that of the original vectors and coming on to this point all forces can be composed into a single resultant vector for example these two forces the gravity on leg foot and the uh, weight boot on leg foot can be composed into a single resultant vector this again, this becomes a single resultant vector now okay now the resultant vector will have a same action line that of the original vectors and it also has the same magnitude and direction okay the resultant vector by adding we got minus 88 newtons of the single vector that of the gravity on leg foot this is the gravity on leg foot and this is the weight boot leg foot force okay can be composed will have a same magnitude that is by adding we will get minus 88 newtons and have a same direction that is in the downward direction okay and it is equal to the arithmetic sum of the composing vectors as i said by adding this we will get the resultant vector same as that of the original vectors okay now because of the forces in a linear force system are collinear and coplanar what is collinear the same uh, in the same line okay in a linear plane and in the same plane okay the point of application
because the forces or vectors in a linear force system are collinear and coplanar the point of application of the resultant vector lies along the common action line point of application is nothing but guys for example if you remove this line action line okay this is the point of application of the weight boot on leg foot and this is the point of application of the gravity on leg foot segment okay the point of application we got the resultant vector okay lies along the common action line the point of application lies along this action line okay and have the same orientation and have the same orientation in space as a composing vectors it has the same orientation that is in the downward direction as a composing vector these are the composing vectors that is one is gravity on leg foot and the weight boot on leg foot segment okay okay guys now for example if you if the if this leg foot segment if this leg foot segment is not moving that is the leg foot segment is stationary then the uh, then it is said to be in a static equilibrium so the net or the resultant forces acting on that segment must be zero but this is not is in this in this case we got the net unbalanced forces of minus 88 newtons and this causes the acceleration of the leg foot segment in the downward direction in order to achieve the equilibrium there should be a net force which uh, acts in an opposite direction to balance uh, this net unbalanced force which is acting in this downward direction to prevent that uh, leg foot segment for be, uh, to be being accelerated in the downward direction so what is that net balanced force which acts in that upward direction before seeing that if you observe closely this is the femur okay which comes in contact with that of the tibia now the femur condyles creates a pushing force guys bone always creates a pushing force not a pulling force pushing p u s h i n g pushing force now the femur creates a pushing force towards the leg foot segment hence these for, uh, femur gravity on leg foot and the weight boot leg foot act in the same direction okay now well, what is a distraction force a distraction force is a net force that creates a pushing of one bony segment away from the other bony segment that is known as the distraction force and it causes the separation that the distraction force causes separation of the two bony segments at the joint okay now the knee joint this is the knee joint which is flexed to 90 degrees okay the knee joint is a hinge type of synovial joint hinge type of synovial joint which is separated which is not sorry guys which is supported by a number of structures and uh, the knee joint uh, uh, static stability is provided by the anterior cruciate ligament posterior cruciate ligament the capsule the medial collateral ligament lateral collateral ligament the oblique popliteal ligament there are other ligaments too okay these static structures for now we'll take the capsule example this is the capsule of the knee joint which provides static stability now this part 
we will name it as anterior capsule okay and this part we will name it as a posterior capsule okay now these capsules anterior and posterior exerts a force in the upward direction and the point of application of this force vectors is in direction to that of the capsular fibers okay for example i'll take the other color now see the anterior capsule has a what vector orientation in this direction that is with respect to that of the capsular fibers in which direction the capsular fibers are now the posterior capsule will have a point of application in the direction of the posterior capsular fibers okay now we will give another name to this force vectors because these force vectors are acting against the leg foot segment in order to provide the equilibrium hence we will add anterior capsule on leg foot segment lf and the posterior capsule on leg foot segment lf so we got aclf that is anterior capsule on leg foot segment and pclf which is known as a posterior capsule on the leg foot segment and these two vectors for example we got the resultant force of uh, minus 88 newtons which is acting in the downward direction if you take this as a 44 newtons and this as again 44 newtons but according to this graph graphical representation these are acting in the positive y-axis with respect to positive y-axis so, so they are assigned a positive sign anterior capsular force vector and the posterior capsular force vector this is also a positive sign hence a net unbalanced force a balanced or a net in order to balance this unbalanced force there will be a net force of 88 newtons acting in the di upward direction in order to balance this minus 88 newtons which is acting in the downward direction so according to the linear force system definition that is the when the two or more forces exist in the same plane and the same segment and the same line then only the linear force system exists but these two force vectors are not and acting in the same plane and in the same line but on the same segment but they are not on the same plane on the same line hence these are not part of the linear force system now we'll see the concurrent force system first the definition when two or more forces acting on a segment and are not collinear and not collinear but converge that is intersect they intersect hence a concurrent force system exists okay this is the definition guys when two or more forces acting on a segment and are not collinear these are not collinear they are not in a linear plane but they converge to intersect then only the concurrent force system exists now in a concurrent force system as we have seen in the uh, in the linear force a uh, linear uh, for system i explained uh, this uh, divergency of the capsule of the knee joint where it forms a two vectors anterior capsule on leg foot and the posterior capsule on leg foot 
these anterior and posterior capsules on the leg foot segment are composed into a single resultant vector this single resultant vector is known as clf that is capsule on leg foot segment okay this is not capsule on left foot segment and the vectors aclf and pclf are extended to identify the point of application these are extended to identify the point of application of the new vector which is known as the capsule on left foot segment now how we'll see how a parallelogram is constructed now if you take the arrow head of the anterior capsule on left foot segment and if you draw like this and this line the new line which is parallel to that of the other vector that is pclf see guys this pclf is in this direction and the new line from the arrow head of the aclf that is anterior capsule on left foot segment arrowhead a new line is drawn in this direction and this new line is parallel see guys this is the new line and this is the piece pclf so these two are parallel okay and uh, another new line is drawn from the arrow head of the PCLF okay so and this another new line from the arrow head of the PCLF is again parallel with that of the ACLF vector now here it is like this from the arrow head of PCLF and the ACLF is this okay this is again parallel and these two new lines intersect at this point and we have to draw the new lines a little longer so that they intersect at the point and this after the intersection of these two new lines the parallelogram is constructed this represents a parallelogram guys okay this is the diagonal of the parallelogram assume it diagonal okay the resultant vector clf that is capsule on leg foot segment share the point of application it has shared the point of application now in this diagram i have removed the anterior capsule on leg foot segment and the posterior capsule on the left foot segment and i have only represented that the capsule on the left foot segment okay and it has a point of application which has shared with, with these two vectors that is ACLF and the PCLF and has a magnitude that is equal to the length of the diagonal okay this is the diagonal and it has the same magnitude that is equal to the length of the diagonal of the parallelogram this is the diagonal of the parallelogram so that is how what is that magnitude that is how much that is plus 188 newtons as we have seen the gravity on leg foot segment exerts minus 48 newtons of force in the downward direction and the weight boot on the leg foot segment exerts minus 40 newtons minus 48 plus minus 40 newtons is equal to minus 88 newtons hence this causes the leg foot segment to accelerate in the downward direction but the but if that happens the leg foot segment will come off so in order to balance that the capsule of the knee joint comes into picture guys now the capsule on the leg foot segments and, uh, and a magnitude of force which is point uh, plus 88 newtons in the upward direction in order to counterbalance this downward direction that is minus 88 newtons in order to maintain the equilibrium of the segment okay guys this is all about the linear and the concurrent force systems 
in a translatory motion if you like the video please subscribe to my channel share with your friends do comment if you have any doubts thanks for watching guys